Good morning, friends. Today, I'd like to return to the idea that Jesus was frustrated in the situation of Matthew 17, verses 14 and 20. Because we talked about the reasons why Jesus might be frustrated, the lack of faith on the part of his disciples, as, as well as the father of the son uh, of the boy who, who needed to be saved from the demon. There were the scribes there putting in, in their own two cents of opposition, and, and the crowds that were surrounding him were, were, were very excitable, but also fickle, really looking for more of a show rather than actually wanting to receive the truths that Christ had to bring. And so we understand how it might be that someone would be frustrated in that situation, but Jesus, that Jesus himself would be frustrated, you know, maybe I don't want to put words in your mouth, dear listener, but might we say that still doesn't feel right? It doesn't sit right with us that Jesus was frustrated. And we talked in the message on Sunday about the fact that frustration in and of itself is, uh, is not sinful. It's, it's what you do with it. And so, a, a huge part of this is that admitting that Jesus was frustrated does not mean that we conclude that he had sin or or anything like that because that's not true. Uh, but even laying that out there, we, we do still have some trouble with this idea that Jesus was frustrated. And one reason that we've already mentioned here and, and everything is, is just because we, we tend to think of frustration as a negative emotion. Um, and, 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 and in our experience, it links us with sin. You know, when we get frustrated, we, we tend to sin. And so we have a hard time separating the, the feeling of frustration from the sin it often induces in us. And, and, and so we think, well, that, that couldn't apply to Jesus. Well, obviously the sin did not apply to Jesus, um, but the frustration did. And as we consider that, um, I think for many of us, at least, we struggle with the idea of Jesus being frustrated even without sin because we struggle with the idea of Jesus expressing really any kind of, of real emotion. Because once again, he, we think of emotions as being so human and Jesus was no mere human or th so the thought goes. And so often we default to this idea of Jesus being, um, you know, yes, we know clinically, we know doctrinally that he was human, but he must have been stoic, quiet, determined, resolute, and more or less expressionless, emotionless as a result. And uh, maybe this is just betraying um, my thought process growing up and and uh, maybe the, the the more conservative tradition that I came out of or, or just what developed in my own head no matter what else I was told. Um, but there are a, a bunch of Christians that really struggle with the idea of Jesus having these human qualities. Because again, when we think human, we think sin. And we want to keep Jesus as far away as possible in our minds from any accusation of sin. And that desire is commendable, okay? But, but it is possible to take that too far. Because at some point, perhaps without even realizing it, um, in this thought process, we actually start to deny the humanity of Christ. We try to separate him so much from the sinfulness that we see in humanity uh, ever since the fall that we separate him from being human at all. And friends, we can't do that. Because if Jesus was not fully human, if he did not have the full range of human emotions, if he did not experience the same sort of life, if he was not tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin in any of it, but if these things were not true, he could not be our substitute. He had to be made like us in every way, except for having no sin, so that he could take our place in satisfying the wrath of God. And so, yes, Jesus was fully human, even as he was fully God. And that is a, a great mystery that we do not know the nuts and bolts of how it works, but we do know from the scriptures that it was true. And that meant he experienced the full range of human emotions, from joy to sadness to frustration, to angst. He experienced all of it. The only difference is that, again, he did not sin in any of it or as a result of any of it. And we, of course, need to keep that fact in mind. Um, I've repeated it like 18 times in the last 30 seconds, um, but we have to keep it in mind because there's a ditch on the other side of the road as well. Because we don't want to separate Jesus from humanity and humanity sins so much that we end up denying that he even was human. We end up acting like he was just this, this emotionless plank of wood that didn't feel anything. 
something. But we also don't want to swing to the other extreme uh, and then conclude that since Jesus felt all of the emotions we feel, and, and you know, let's take it one step further because can you really can you really feel everything that we feel if you don't experience everything that we experience in actuality, which would mean as one simple example that probably when he sat with the prostitutes and tax collectors, you know, he probably told a couple of off-color jokes. You know, he probably made some decisions because you and I would too, and he needed to feel what we feel, right? He probably made some decisions that when he woke up the next morning, he kind of regretted. And if we go with that kind of conclusion, you know, in, in affirming uh, the humanity of Jesus in that way, we, we go way too far and we do the thing that we were trying not to do before, such that in connecting Jesus with humanity and all those experiences of humanity, um, we also connect him to sin. We make him a partic- partaker in the sin of humanity, but may it never be because Jesus can't be our substitute if he isn't human like us, but he also can't be our substitute if he was also sinful like us. And so the point is that Jesus did have emotions, human emotions, but he did so without sin. He was and is the God man, perfect and sinless, but again, in in the manness of him, he had a fully human nature. And here's something that I hope might help to pull things together here, because we need to understand that emotions are inherent to who we are as human beings. God made us. He created us as emotional beings. But do you know what God did not create in us? When he first created the human race, he, he, he created humans not sinful, Sin, in the ultimate sense, is not a natural part of who we are as humans, but emotions are. You think about that? Emotions are a baseline, natural, by God's nature, part of who we are, but sin is not. Sin is a later invader that comes in and distorts and perverts the emotions that we originally had. And so it is actually more human, more human to have emotions than it is to have sin. And guess what? Jesus had emotions without sin because he was the human, the man that we always should have been. Where the first man, Adam, failed to be what he should have been. Jesus Christ, the second Adam, succeeded. Jesus was the perfect human because he fulfilled what being human was always intended to be. And that perfect human by nature of God's creation included experiencing emotions. And if that weren't enough, we have to ask ourselves, why did God create humans as emotional creatures? Because God himself, as part of his nature, who he is intrinsically, he has emotions. Now, we need to be very careful because when we point to another person, a sinful human person, and we say that person is emotional, we tend to to mean that in a way that indicates that they they are ruled by their emotions, that they have no control of the of their emotions all right um and and while that is often the case with us because we are sinful, such is of course not the case with God. We do read through the scriptures that God displays emotions, but that does not mean that he is emotional in the sense that those emotions control him or that he can be manipulated by emotions or or anything else like that. Because in his perfect being, in his holiness, in his sinless righteousness, God displays emotions. Just in these past few weeks, we have seen that he took pleasure. He was delighted in his son. Well, friends, to take pleasure is to feel something. It's to experience emotion. And yes, we see that at other times, God's anger waxed hot because of the wickedness of the people. And that anger, that wrath is indeed an emotion. Now, God is, again, never out of control. And his anger is never unjustified. But we do admit that there is emotion there. And if God the Father can rightly experience the emotion of anger on account of wickedness and and rebellion, does it not make complete sense that Jesus, God's Son, can rightly experience frustration, which is a lesser, a much more mild form of anger than that full wrath of God? 
You know, he could experience that, that frustration toward those who do not believe his word, who, for those who stand opposed to him, or even his own followers who seem to, to stubbornly refuse to learn. And really, when we think about all of this together, it does make sense that Jesus could experience emotion, that Jesus can express frustration, because in his humanity, he was fully human, but without sin. And that works because humans were created by God as emotional creatures without sin. So he is being the human that God always intended humans to be. Perfect in obedience. Perfect to God's will. And on top of that, but it appears uh, uh, because of the appears that, that those emotions are part of God's image laid upon us, it, it is that we are comforted that God himself also displays emotions as part of his own nature, as part of who he is doing so without sin, which means that we can strive to partake in our emotions, to express emotions from joy to frustration in our own lives, and yet we can do so in God's power, relying upon him, we can express those emotions without sin. Friends, I hope this makes sense, and I hope it helps us to understand more about who Jesus was and is, not only in his divinity, not only in his godhood, but also in his humanity, in his human nature. I love you guys. Have a good and godly day, and Lord willing, I'll see you soon.